Okay, so um, today I'm going to go to uh, Tangaluma with uh, a group called Chill. So Chill is a, um, a program done by uh, an Australian program called Code Blue for Autism. And it's basically an adult program that it used to be over 18s, but now it's maybe even high school. But like, um, it's basically for um, late teenagers and adults on the autism spectrum. It's almost kind of like... It's, it's a bit like school, but not really. It's more like a uni course where um, autistic people are taught like how to do art, how to socialise better, how to do music and do fun things. And I've I've been a part of the program since um, April last year and I've been really enjoying it. But anyway, I've never been to Tangalimba before. It's, um, it's on Morton Island. It's about, I think, 15 k's off um, the coast of Brisbane. But anyway, I'm going this morning and I'm going to be taking my camera along. So if you're interested in seeing me going on my journey, um, well, here it is. But so uh, without further ado, um, I am ready to go. So uh, let's do this. How are you? Pretty good, ready to go. Yeah. Sure. How are you? Hi Joseph, how are you?
come and say hello. <laughs> well, uh, welcome to Spooky Island, ladies and gents. Uh, I can't see Rowan Atkinson anywhere. I wonder where he could be. Don't bother it. They can snap at you, you know. So all the chilies are having lunch at the moment, waiting to go to the sand dunes, is that correct? Sure is. So Parola's is one of the prime chill mentors. Prime? Yeah. That's a nice way to put it. Yeah, or something like that, but yeah. <laughs> Have you you've enjoyed your day, Pearls? Loving it, loving it. So many fish. I was so surprised when we went snorkeling how many fish were so close to us. I know, it was crazy. I thought that there'd be a bit of a bit of different distance. I, I, I really wanted to touch them, but I knew yeah. that I shouldn't because it'd make them all go away. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They did look very like smooth though. It's funny because it's like they're used to the snorkels. Mm. Like they're not scared of them, yeah. but they'll probably get a bit freaked out if you touch them. Yeah, it's true. So yeah. It's true. It's, yeah. But no, it was really cool. Really, really cool. Yeah, it was. And the water was beautiful. It was absolutely stunning. And I'm glad that the sun's out too because I was worried that it was going to be cloudy all day. Yeah. Which would have been fine. It's, it's, it's not extremely sunny. It's yeah. not like a heat wave, but yeah, it's good. Cool. I was crossing my fingers that it wasn't going to heavily rain last night, but it turned out to be all right. So yeah. I was looking forward to the sand tobogganing yeah, soon. Absolutely. Getting ready. Gonna, gonna have to hit, hit a second wind, I think. At the moment, I'm like, do, a food coma. Do you know where we'll be, we'll be able to keep our bags for the sand? Yeah, tent? yeah. There's, um, there'll, there'll be a safe spot. They're not just gonna be yeah, blown away. There's the, the bus, so we're taking the bus to it. Okay. So, um, we can leave stuff yeah. on the bus, but you can also take I'm take not stuff. sure if I should take my camera off or not. I think you could. Okay. Right. You probably don't want to take it downhill. No, 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 no. <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah. Yeah. No POVs, so. Yeah, yeah. 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 Alright. Oh. Rex, Rex. And push this. <laughs> Yeah, me too. Oh, it's in that photo. Oh, that's the first time. We want to find Mystery Island. We're going to find a scooby doing the games of Ron Atkinson. Beautiful. Oh, the buses are green. Oh, they're green. Where did the bus off to? Where did the bus off to? The bus is just up here. So something up today. Um, yeah. On board soon. Oh, I handed them to you with your water bottle. Wait, you're trying to get the same word? <laughs> Three, two, one, water. Ah! <laughs> okay. Come on, Grace, do a dance. Water. No, you said water already. Oh, okay, do okay. it. Forget it happened. For us, thoughts Three, on two, today? One. I think. Three, two, one, shower. <laughs> My head broke. My head broke. Is that Will's camera? <laughs> Alright. So, yes, I, this is me, Will, at the. Uh, Kangalooma trip chill oh, yeah. 2023. <laughs> we 
So is there anything you wanted to ask me about? Uh, one word describing today, so far. It's amazing. Fun. Yep. Those are three words. Megs? I already said that. Huh? One word describing today. Um, fish. <laughs> And uh, one thing we like to talk about before we leave the restricted area is the green. This is an awful load of vegetables. This is going to be a has the possibility of making our tour go over the top. Is anyone here this afternoon got a problem with this tour should inadvertently go over the top? No, that's the end of our bus. It's going to be on the same Yeah. Well, Here. My name's Ross, I'm going to be your slide guide this afternoon. Guide. This young lady's Jazz. Jazz is from the Tangaluma Photo Shop and she's going to be taking your photos when we're sliding down the dunes. And uh, also down around the bus, she does family and group photos. And Jazz will explain to you where you can view your photos before we leave the desert this afternoon. So just going to have a quick safety briefing. Everyone should now have their seat belts fastened. <laughs> and there's two reasons for this. One, I'm a terrible driver. <laughs> and two, very shortly, we're going to be leaving the concrete pass. We're heading out into the national park and there are no roads on this island. It's all rough sand tracks and they are really rough at the moment. There are so many people have come over here for Christmas and they're dragging caravans and boats and all sorts of things. And the tracks are a real mess, really bouncy. So wear your seatbelts and uh, we'll all be good. Now, emergencies. I'm not anticipating any emergencies, but if we need to leave the bus ordinarily, we'll use the exit door here. Uh, if this exit door is not available, there's a number of emergency exit windows. One here, one there, like two down the back. They've got red hammers on the window pillars. Now, if we need to go out through the emergency exit windows, you remove the hammer from the pillar, strike the center of the window, it will go bang, and we can push those windows out and exit that way. Now, if we can't use the door, we can't use the exit windows, we've also got two emergency roof hatches, one here, one at the rear of the bus. Uh, I've got a first aid kit up here. I've got a fire extinguisher here by the door and also beside my seat in the event of a fire. It's most likely going to occur right here where the engine is, up next to me. Uh, so in the event of a fire, don't worry about it, I'll deal with that. You guys need to leave the bus by whatever means available go beyond the rear of the bus and assemble as a group in a safe place and uh, depending on my mood and how well the bus is running I'll either let it burn or I'll do something about uh, putting the fire out. On the back of my seat there's a list of uh, contact numbers if I'm incapacitated for any reason uh, and you guys want to get back to the resort in time for the last boat today or happy hour this evening bring the numbers on uh, that emergency information sheet and I can guarantee you'll uh, make your choice. Okay, well that's about it. Uh, everyone's strapped in. Let's go and have some fun, shall we? Yeah! yeah. 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 Carnations in its lifetime. It was once a hunting ground for the in local indigenous people, the Noogie people. Uh, Tangaluma means meeting place of the fishes. And the Noogie men would uh, go into the water with their spears and they'd beat their spears together. And the dolphins would chase the fish in so that they could spear them. And to thank the dolphins for their help, the Noogie people shared their catch. Uh, during the Second World War, there was a Navy base here. 
And then in 1952, Tangaluma became the largest land-based whaling station in the Southern Hemisphere. The company operating here had a, a contractor quoted 600 humpback whales every year. And they did this in the waters out of the east coast of the island using boats called whale chaser boats. And uh, so they would hunt the humpback whales and they would tow the carcasses back here and then they would haul them up onto uh, what's known as the flensing deck. Uh, it's a big uh, sort of a concrete structure near where the buses are. And uh, they used to, they would cut them up with a tool called a flensing knife and then drop the bits of whale down in, into the boilers below through holes in the deck. Rendering, uh, rendering them down into oil. Now, there wasn't just whaling going on here, there was also whaling in other places along the east coast of Australia, places like Byron Bay and Eden, and ship-based whaling in the Southern Ocean. And the poor whales didn't stand a chance. Their numbers were very quickly uh, denuded. And um, as the years went by, it was getting harder and harder to find these whales. In 1962, the last year of operation of the whaling station, they only managed to capture 68 whales. Now, the cost of um, whaling was increasing due to the scarcity of the whales, uh, putting on more boats and using... Uh, Over the millennia, we've had ice ages and... Wow. I thought the sand was going to be way hotter. Yeah, Grace, he literally just said, don't run away, and you've run away. I think it's... This is the perfect weather for like Tangaluma. It's not too hot. Yeah, it's it's not like bleaching the sand, so it's not. I knew that was so interesting by watching the video. Wow. Wait, Pros, you know what this reminds me of? The scene in Interstellar when the waves come towards them. <laughs> Dude, that's terrible. Tars, Tars. Come on, Bucks! File? Good reason why we do it. Two good reasons why we do that. You right, mate? Yeah! Nah, not at all. Well, it's not scary, folks. Anyone that's done it before will tell you it's not scary. Okay, what we're going to do, walk up the hill, these boards are actually designed by NASA. Whoa. Whoa. NASA. Really? Yeah. Fine tuned and um, copied by Tangaluma Resort. Yeah. Bunnings, call it Masonite. What we're going to do is we're going to be walking up that hill single file, carrying our magic slides. It's all eight stories of it. Now the reason we walk up single file is we're allergic to footprints. Okay? A footprint, you come down on these boards at about 50 to 60 kilometers per hour. Hitting a footprint only five millimetres from the surface, it's like riding a bicycle into a Brisbane pothole. So we're allergic to footprints, so we always walk what we call the walking track. The other reason is the constant walking up and down the sand compresses the sand down and makes it easy to walk in. So we're going to carry our magic slides up the top of the hill. Roscoe and I will be up there. Roscoe will beat me up there for sure. We both got a bit of candle wax in our pockets. We'll give your board a bit of a scrub down with that, make it nice and shiny. No, and then we'll place shiny. it on top of the hill facing downwards. If you're wearing a cap like I am, I'll ask you to take it off and put it down your shirt. Oh. Any idea why we do that? Oh. Any idea why? What if the board goes down? It'll come, come off. Yeah. And then what happens? Yeah, oh. You want to walk all over the sand dunes with your big feet put and uh, Wreck our sand dunes. Once again, folks, it comes down to footprints, okay? Then I'll say, like, kneel in the sand for me. So all you've got to do, can you watch it? Yeah. All you've got to do is just kneel in the sand like that, and then I'll move the board backwards or forwards to where I think it needs to be for your height and weight. I'll tell you what a lot of people do to me, folks. I push it forward like that, and they go. <laughs> and then I look at their size and weight again, and I reset it. <laughs> yeah. so once your knees are set in the sand, leave them set, I'll move the board backwards or forwards, and then I'll say lay flat on your board. Just put your hands like that, straight down. Now if you can't do that with your hands, you're not flat. People say, yeah, I'm flat, ready to go. Right, let's go. Won't work. Happy hopeless. You must have your hands totally free, weight on your chest, and all I do, 
put my fingertips about yeah. here. Slip the board up. Yeah. That's all you got to do, folks. Your elbows are way up like chicken wings. See my elbows are pointing up towards the side? Bend chickens. Yeah, bend chickens. chickens. <laughs> and pull that board up. Now the board is pull that's that board up. The faster you will go, the smoother you will go, and the less sand you'll get in the face. Now, folks, there's nothing dangerous about sandboarding. We've been doing it for 30, 40 years. The yeah. company loves us. Where the danger lies is being collision. impossible. About the slider. So once you finish sliding, you, you'll probably want to stand and pose for a photo or brush the sand out of every cavity of your body. Don't do that, folks. Get straight back to the walking track. The walking track is the only safe place on the dunes when people are sliding. If you're not on, ask yourself. If you're not on, ask yourself. We never know which way the board's going to duck off, so don't just think you've walked a couple of steps to one side. Get back to the walking track, then get the sand off, then get the photos taken. You can come back to the bus, there's plenty of drinking water and cups in the bus, or come back up the hill. Just if you're wondering, there's a record of eight times in the allocated 45 minutes to come up, wait in line, and slide. Have I covered everything? I'll just go over. I'll just go over the rules again briefly. Walk up the hill, carrying your magic slide, single file. Bend that board, get off the track. Nothing more to it, folks. Grab yourselves a board. Now, if you do grab, see a board and it's got a white X on the left side, just throw it to one side and grab another one. I'll start to make my way up there, and uh, we'll see you up there. Awesome. Any questions before we go? The bell. Yeah, you'll slide from the top. You'll slide really well. No, you watch the other people go. You watch the other people go first. You let a few people go. You can do quad bikes at a lot of places, but I think you could only do something like this here. This is like a once in a very lifetime experience. This is really yeah. Wow, watch. But imagine if we did this, but yeah, also but came to... here on quad bikes. Mm, oh, that would just be too much, man. Just to relax my muscles. Just going off that way. It's true, yeah. Well, someone was saying they just need a, a lift, you know, like a ski lift. Who's that? Not one of us.
just need to relax on this bus so far. Yeah, would, would you like to go? It's not really doing much. Oh, oh. shoot. Probably the worst. We can go for it on a squid. We may not have time. Let's put this one down and strike. <laughs> Okay, that's awesome. Did you get it? Yeah, I got it really good actually. Oh my god, it's too hot in here actually. So there's a helicopter over there. There's the aqua ocean, very beautiful with like the boats. And that is basically our day at Tangaluma. So what do you think for us? I think it has been a divinely successful day. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of fun. Nothing went wrong. Nothing went wrong. It's been yeah. very smooth. I mean, yeah. we haven't gotten back to Brisbane yet, so no. you never know. Yeah. We might encounter pirates. Yeah. And uh, and get an iceberg marooned or something or an iceberg. Yeah. <laughs> that would be pretty bad. Yeah. But otherwise, it's gone very smoothly. I've yeah. Had a great day. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. Have you enjoyed? Oh, absolutely. I'd give it a ten out of ten. Totally. Yeah. Love it. All right. Will's gonna have some very questionable. <laughs>